My name is Teresa Bell. I'm 43 years old and I'm a nine year sarcoma cancer survivor. I'll start by telling you where my journey began. Um, it was back in 2003. I was, um, my son was one year old and I, my belly wouldn't go away. I had tried losing weight, I tried exercising, and I just kept having this increasing baby belly. So I swallowed my pride one day, went to my doctor, and said, is this normal? And he, he felt my stomach and he immediately said, no, you know, we need to do some tests. I very quickly found myself whisked away into the world of tests. Within a month, I'd had ultrasounds, CT scans. I'd been to Kingston Cancer Regional Center and seen some experts there. And they were letting me know that I had a large mass and I needed surgery right away. At the time, we thought it might have been an ovarian cyst or um, something um, gynecologically related. I went into surgery in December. I, I was operated on by a gynecologist surgeon there but during surgery they discovered that it was something different than what they expected and they brought in a cancer surgeon. When I awoke I had had a 23 centimeter tumor mass removed from my abdomen. It was basically the size of a watermelon. I went home to heal, went back for my follow-up test in about a month's time, sat down with the surgeon and was completely unexpecting the news that I had had cancer. He said to me, he says, it was a malignant tumor. And I thought for a moment, wait a minute, is that the good one or the bad one? Um, and it, it was the bad one. But he assured me that they had removed the tumor, it was gone, and I honestly didn't give it another moment's thought. It was like, whew, close call, over with. And I went on my merry way with life. Four years later, um, my best friend is, is saying to me, why are you not going for your follow-up CT scan. You're supposed to go for a scan every six months, aren't you? And I'd become so complacent and relaxed with it that I wasn't even bothering to rebook my scan. I went away on holidays and she was the best friend in the world. She sent my scan in, she faxed it in and booked my test. I went for that test and that was the test that showed that the cancer had returned. They did the incision, they took a look around, found four trouble spots, small tumors that they removed. I you know, healed up from that, went back to see them and they said, okay, that, that was the same sarcoma cancer again. The type of cancer I have is actually titled myxoid liposarcoma. Sarcoma is a rare cancer, um, very, but 1% of all cancers are sarcoma cancer. My type of sarcoma cancer is a cancer of connective tissue. So you can have sarcoma cancer from head to toe uh, and is given a different type of name and has different characteristics and tr different treatments based on where it occurs in your body. It can occur in muscle, fat, ligaments, bones. Mine grows in the fat cells, hence the word liposarcoma. It grows in my abdomen. Tumors are, can grow anywhere in my abdomen. They're not particularly in an organ, they're just alongside of them. So I did learn, I learned this type of information at my second recurrence, but again, I didn't really know the impact or the danger of having sarcoma cancer. I, I celebrated in my mind that it was gone again, um, no further treatment was suggested. I, my husband and I remember leaving that hospital that day, we, we were kind of celebrating, it was like, whew, they got it. And I bought a leather jacket on the way home and, and again, really didn't give it much more thought. That was 2007 that that recurrence occurred. But at that point in time, I did start to change some things about my life. Um, I started to exercise, I started to eat well, I started to rebalance my life and, uh, and just start to be a healthier person. One of the first lessons I had to learn is that, that life is a fluid thing, it's always a movement, it, things are always changing, always happening. And I had to learn to let go of that control a little bit because um, things changed a lot for me in 2008. In 2008, I noticed the tumors, I noticed, I didn't, I didn't know there were tumors, but I could feel pressure spots in my abdomen. And I knew, I knew something was amiss. The doctors did a scan and sure enough, um, they saw more masses growing. So this was my third reoccurrence. Things are happening, things are growing. At this point in time, I thought, okay, I need a second opinion. I think I better take this further. So the doctors, arranged for me to go to Princess Margaret and see some specialists there. About three months had lapsed and when they did a scan they noticed that the tumors were growing really quickly and they were in a place that they considered inoperable. So all along in my cancer journey I've been thinking doctors have it, they can control it, I don't need to worry about it, I just need to do what they say. 
and then and then you know sometimes in life we have these things that happen that we they're big events they're really big events I was I'd been to the doctors for my appointments I'd seen lots of specialists and I thought they were working on a solution and I was sitting at work one day and the phone rang it was actually Halloween day we were dressed up in costumes I remember it very well I was dressed as a pirate and I picked up the phone and it was one of the doctors that I had seen at Princess Margaret and she said you know we wanted to let you know that your case has been taken to the tumor board and, and it's been discussed and the words I heard were there's no treatment for you I remember I got up from my desk and I walked through the office and I my best friend works with us I tapped her on the shoulder I grabbed her hand I let her out of the office and then I cried I cried really really hard and she didn't even know what I was crying about and then but the day has to go on right you know we're at work we have things to do my kids are coming home from school they want to dress up in their costumes and and the day went on and yet I still had to tell my husband this and how do you sit down and tell the person that means the most in the world to you that's your partner in life that there's nothing can be done to get rid of the cancer that's growing inside of you and that it's going to consume you and it's going to take your life it was absolutely the most horrible thing I've ever had to do was sit down and tell Mike that news we had about a month of really rough times where we didn't know what to think we didn't know what to do and you know you just curl up in bed at night and you just hang on to each other and you were just terrified you were just absolutely terrified and you felt like the world had crashed around you and you you didn't know what to do I I looked under every stone and as I unturned stones I started to learn things and I started to figure out what I could do now what we did in that situation I'm not advocating um, but I am advocating that you need to take control of your of your of your destiny and of your medical care. And I found a doctor and I found a medical system and a treatment plan that I believed in. And I went for it and I did it. Um, my treatment plan actually involved going to Mexico and meeting an oncologist there and paying for my chemotherapy and my radiation out of pocket. So I always seemed to be doing cancer treatment around my birthday. My original treatment was in December in 2003, and uh, this treatment was December 2008, and my birthday is in December. So in December, I underwent my chemotherapy and my radiation treatment. The tumors started to shrink. I went for an MRI scan in January. Our tum my tumors were down to 50%, and I started talking with a surgeon at Kingston Cancer Center. And it took me about three appointments to talk with him about what I wanted. Um, I wanted him to operate. I wanted him to try and remove these tumors that they said could not be removed because of their location. And after some counseling, after he sat and talked with my husband and I about the risks, um, we said, yes, we want to go ahead with this. And we did. And surgery happened in 2009. All the tumors were removed. And I was once again free of, my, free of the disease. I, I would love to tell you at this point in time that that was it, you know, and I've moved on and enjoyed my life since then. My type of cancer isn't like that. I have a recurrent cancer. It's not a case of when it, if it will come back, it is when it will come back. Um, liposarcoma is incurable and recurrent, but I might be able to get some very long runs before it comes back, and that's what we're going for. My cancer did return in 2010. More tumors were found on a CT scan. I went under the care of a, of a doctor in Montreal who runs a very good young adult clinic. Um, I went to him for chemotherapy, and that was my first experience with really strong chemotherapy. So I went through seven months of chemotherapy. I was bald as a cue ball. Um, I discovered that I really like being bald, which is kind of a funny upside to it. This year, it came back again. So this summer, um, more tumors were found. I went for surgery. Um, three tumors were removed. Um, I have an excellent surgeon. He did a great job, and I'm healing up from that. And I guess that's the nuts and bolts of how the cancer journey goes for me. But it's not so much about the tumors and the treatment. It's about how your life changes and what you learn. And I have learned so many lessons through my cancer journey. And I know it's kind of a, a try, a, a worn out phrase, you know, my life is better for cancer. And I wouldn't wish cancer on anyone. And I don't go so far as to say it's a gift in my life, but it is a very, very good teacher.
it's a harsh but very effective teacher and I definitely have learned lessons I I my life is so much fuller now and it's through the lessons learned and through the cancer journey I learned I learned about fear and I learned what it was to be really really afraid and I learned what to do when I was afraid I read in Lance Armstrong's book about him being afraid and about when you're afraid of something for me it's I think about what I'm afraid of and I'm willing to look at it and the day when that day came when I was able to open the door and look at the thing I was afraid of was the day I gained control over the fear I learned about the human spirit and all through the years I have met so many beautiful people I can't even begin to count there has to be thousands of beautiful people that I've I've met here and you know day to day when you're at work when you're going for treatments and the human spirit is an incredible thing there is a light inside of each person and we truly want to help each other and given the opportunity we do we we are resilient we we have hope hope burns inside all of us and nothing can extinguish it I have learned I've learned about help I always wanted to give help I I love helping someone else I also learned that there are times when you need to accept help and sometimes you need to just outright ask for help and people want to help you and sometimes we're so busy trying to be good people that we forget or we don't quiet down long enough to let someone else help us um, helping each other is is what people thrive on it's it's what we were meant to do it's 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 how we relate to each other there are times um, you know if I if I get a test result back and it's it's you know unpleasant news um, sometimes I give myself a day to think about it the last time I got the recurrence news I was really shocked this summer when I found out it was back I really you know each time the cancer comes back you make changes in your life and you think okay I've got enough changes made I'm gonna get a good long run of it now so I was really floored when it came back and it took me a week of knowing that it was back to be able to tell my kids about it the nature of my journey is is you pick yourself up and you go on and you know it's like that 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 there's a quote that's so well said and it's, you don't have to see the whole staircase you just have to take the first step so I guess my journey's been a lot of first steps